Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, does not bear good fruit, is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? And in reply, John the Baptist said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not exhort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectations, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not unworthy to tie the thong of his sins. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his grain. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. If ever there was a Sunday of mixed messages, this is it. In our first reading, Zephaniah, usually a gloomy Gus, is inviting us to shout for joy. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Isaiah echoes the invitation. Sing praises to the Lord who has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. And in his prison cell, remembering his heritage, St. Paul exhorts his readers Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. We're liking these guys. They are what this season is all about. We're looking at a full, rich concert schedule with something for everybody. We're looking at a December that will offer one party after another. That's what delights us. We're looking forward to our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day at worship and then time with family and friends. Isaiah, Zephaniah, St. Paul seem to have been swept away by the spirit of the season. Then, in the gospel of all places, along comes John the Baptist. Grumpy, grizzled, and yelling at us, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He's not a happy camper, and he's angry, calling us names. He doesn't look like a fun guy to have around, and the wise would do well to avoid him. Who let that guy in here, we might ask, and why does he keep showing up every Christmas? Church growth people tend to ignore John the Baptist, you know, 
I've searched the websites of some of the megachurches across the country, and John the Baptist doesn't appear to be appearing on their stages. Actually, you won't hear much about Advent at all, because that's liturgical business, with candles, crosses, especially crosses. And it just might turn people off. And this, if you read it literally in the Greek, children of snakes stuff that John is proclaiming has no business ruining our rejoicing. You gotta hand it to the feel good Starbucks store Christians. They don't mix their messages. They don't let what's in the gospel trump what they want to say about the season. They want it to be all about rejoicing. All Christmas music, all the time. And then along comes John the Baptist to ruin the festivities. Killjoy.